Hello and welcome to the Your CAD Capture series. This video demonstrates creating a design template in the Your CAD Capture project. Choose Options and click on the Design Template command. And you can see across the top of the Design Template menu that there are six tabs for setting up a default page size or setting up your title block. Any changes to the design template settings are saved in a capture.ini file and applied to all newly created designs only. In addition, changing your design template settings does not affect any existing designs, and the applied settings are retained in the design, even when transferred. Now let's look at the first tab in the design template menu. That would be the fonts tab used to control the appearance of schematic text. Here, you can change the net names, reference designations, and other appearances. Each of these is a different type of schematic text assigned to a font style and font size. Click on the rectangle box to change the different font and style, and then we'll also increase the font size. And now, this will not affect the existing design and will be applied when you create a brand new project. These design settings are saved in the capture.ini file. The next tab is the Title Block tab, and you can see the title block in the lower right corner of each of your schematic pages. It contains a field for the title of the design or project and the company name and contact information. And all of these fields are represented in the Title Block tab. The Title Block is a schematic symbol that resides in a library. Use that browser button to browse the library containing our Title Block symbol. And then, you'll specify the name of the title block symbol in that library. To view the symbol in the library, you go to the library that you selected and click on the symbol name. And this is the title block symbol you specified in the design template form. There are placeholders for things like company name and address and the design or project title field. So you'll build your title block symbol, make it look the way you want, and also, you can add your company logo. Let's take a moment to set up the fields in the title block tab. We'll specify the design project, title, company name, address information, and a revision level. And all of this information will be stored in a capture.ini file and applied to a brand new project. Notice that in the title block, we are calling out an A-size page, and this takes us to the next tab in the design template menu which is the page size tab where, we can specify a unit of measure in either English or metric units. And if we select MM, our dimensions units to measure, and page sizes change accordingly. We have an A through E size page in the English units, and our dimensions are set to inches. Each page size can specify the width and height information of a working area. In this A size example, this would include title block, page border, and grid reference information and allows for some margin around the edges of the page when printed in landscape orientation at a one-to-one -one scale. The last field in the page size tab is the pin-to-pin -pin spacing field, which lets you control the size of your library parts by increasing or decreasing the distance between pins. For example, if you change the value to 200 mils, you will be magnifying my library parts by a factor of 2 to 1. So we recommend you use the default value unless you need to scale your library parts. Next, let's look at the Grid Reference tab, which is used to set up a grid referencing system along your schematic page's top and left-hand edges. So you would decide in the horizontal direction, for example, how many sections to break that edge up into and whether or not it should be labeled alphabetically or numerically. Then the same thing is done for the left vertical edge of the grid reference system. How many sections do we break it up into, and whether it's alphabetic or numeric? Then the numbering or lettering system can be ascending or descending, which would be relative to the upper left-hand corner of the schematic. You can control the width of the grid referencing along the top and left-hand edge. In our example, we're showing width of 100 mils, and you can also control the display and printing of the page border, title block, and grid reference. The next tab is the Hierarchy tab, which allows you to specify that hierarchical blocks are non-primitive, 
meaning from design navigation or a net listing standpoint, you wanted to send through that block to see the lower level data below. Parts are generally flagged as primitive unless there is lower level data present. The last tab is STD compatibility and is only applied if you ever need to save your capture schematic for use with older pre-Windows or DOS versions of the tool. All of the changes that have been made to the design template settings are saved in the capture.ini file and are waiting to be applied to a brand new design or project, so you need to close the current project and create a brand new project. Ensure that the design template settings are set correctly before creating a project. Now, create a new design file in which all design template settings have been applied. Next, we'll add a new part to ensure that the reference designator text we specified in the design template is being applied correctly, and we see that it is. We also see that the title block information in the design template was applied to the title block, as well as the A size page, and our grid reference information. That's all the time we have now for this video. Thanks for watching.